Yep. All right. So they already stole 15 minutes of my presentation. <laughs> no, uh, no problem, right? Uh, so I'm going to try and move along fairly quickly to get us back on the schedule. But when uh, I was uh, part of the tech board, uh, which is probably uh, how it is that I got assigned uh, quite a few topics that we're going to be talking today about, I um, told Ronnie, just stick me wherever you need me. So um, hence you're, uh, you're stuck with me on the social media track today. But uh, good news is you're going to be learning a lot. Uh, just to give you some quick background information about me, I uh, am completely self-taught. Um, I, I have a fam my family owns a golf course. And basically my main motivation was about eight years ago. I would not wish this one on anyone. Uh, but uh, the main road to my golf course closed down. And so that everybody had to take almost a 30 minute detour in order to get to my golf course. And um, so we lost, you know, only like a quarter of a million dollars that year. <laughs> and uh, so luckily I have uh, parents who are quite generous, and so they uh, dug into their uh, retirement in order to, uh, uh, we would have closed, had to close our doors. It was uh, not um, a pleasant experience whatsoever. And because I have a familial obligation, I wanted to try desperately to be able to pay my parents back um, that money. And so that became my obsession of how to market golf. You guys can come on in. This is going to be real quick. Come on, come on in. You can sit here in the front. Uh, this kind of just found foundation. Come on, come on in. <laughs> um, so anyway, the reason I say that is I don't have any schooling whatsoever. So I just have a sense of drive that I think most people can achieve if they want to. Um, and, uh, and I'm going to give you guys a bunch of great tips today to take back to your golf course. So to me though, the foundation of marketing comes with identifying who your golfer is. If you do not know who your specific golfer, we all have a different golfer who plays our golf course. And we need to be writing and presenting ourselves to that specific person, then you're, you're kind of wasting a lot of marketing dollars if you're just marketing to everyone. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, if you're like me, I've, I have attended many marketing seminars all over the country, and they all tell you to do this. And for about the first five years, I was like, that's really dumb. I'm not going to do it. So I want to encourage you to actually do what I am talking about today with your whole heart. Because when I finally sat down and did it about three years ago, it made a huge difference in my marketing. So if you do not know who your per perfect golfer is, it's completely possible that your marketing, your, you might actually be marketing to your perfect nightmare instead. So that is, uh, that's why it's so important. We're going to be covering um, these topics today. We're going to be talking about, once again, why it is important, as well as what makes up your perfect golfer, who is that perfect golfer based on, and then I'm going to give you some tips on follow-up of what I want you to do uh, once you get back to your club. All right, so to begin, why this is so important. When we meet our golfers now, it may not necessarily be when they pull into the parking lot and come to our clubhouse. That's, that's, not, that's what technology is talking about, right? They often meet us on our website, on our social posts. Um, they're meeting us through our words. And so that's very important because we have to express what our golf course is, what the personality of our golf course is, through our words. So when you know who your perfect golfer is, it's going to help you know what words to use. How do they talk? It's going to give you some great clear clarity on how to reach that person. There's lots of different golfers out there, and they may not necessarily all want to play at all of our golf courses. You can't sell to everyone. And I really like this little saying here. Um, if you want to make everyone happy, um, don't be a leader, you gotta go sell ice cream, right? Because everybody likes ice cream. And that the same kind of applies. Um, you, can't, you can't maybe appeal to every single golf, golfer out there. And that's completely okay. And our words and what we use, um, the emotions are what trigger purchases. So the whole point at the end of the day is to make money, right? 
So we want to be able to focus on who that person is so that we can go through with a sale. And when you are not speaking about the golfer who comes to your facility, then you're speaking entirely too generally and you're not going to be as successful. And so, for example, I want you just to kind of think about dating sites, okay? So dating sites, that seems like kind of a minor um, niche, if you will, like a dating site, they try to find dates, right? And so I decided to Google dating sites. And guess what I came up with? I came up with eHarmony, okay? They're more about love. I came up with a dating site that is just farmers only. They're going to appeal to a different person. I came up with online senior dating sites. And then this next one, I, I can't even believe I found this. Sugar Daddy. <laughs> and I wasn't even in Las Vegas when I found this. There is a Sugar Daddy. Uh, I didn't like make sure this was legit. I just thought the picture was funny. <laughs> but the point being oh, that there is... <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> A golfer is not the same as maybe a soccer player. The point is, is that there are lots of different fine-tuning that we can do at our clubs. So when you're talking about picking out who is your favorite golfer, you're going to be thinking about just one person. And this is going to free your mind. Everybody I talk to, particularly when it comes to social media, they really struggle with what to post and that kind of thing. And when you find out who your perfect golfer is, you're going to be thinking about that person when you write that post. And it is so incredibly helpful. Now, I'm sure everyone would love their perfect golfer to be a Phil, right? But you know what? This right here is actually what my golfer looks like. And lately, my golfer is even covered in tattoos. And it even has a piercing. Uh, definitely not Phil. And so they're going to want different words spoken to them than um, somebody who would be more like Phil. Not that, I'm sure some of you have golf courses that are going to speak to a golfer like Phil. That just isn't me. So in order to do that, we have to know more than just their age, where they live, you know, the kind of standard stuff. We need to know about their family. We need to know where they live, obviously. But then we also need to really get dialed in of what their interests are, what are their hobbies. What kind of TV shows do they watch? What movies do they watch? And the reason this is important is because now when you're introducing your golf course through your words, you can make references. So, you know, I'm in my 40s, and I can make references about Seinfeld because I know what Seinfeld is. My kids, who are 20 and under, I, it really annoys me, it makes me feel old, but um, when I make a sign called re reference, they have no idea what I'm talking about. And this is the whole point of why we have to dial in who that perfect golfer is, because if my golfer is a 40-year-old, then we can make sign called references. But if my perfect golfer is a 24-year-old, I probably can't do that. Your message is going to resonate <coughs> with that perfect golfer. When you are talking to everybody, then you are talking to nobody. This is so fundamentally important when it comes to marketing. So who, who is your golfer based on? Now, your golfer might be based on someone that you actually know. It might be a real golfer. It might be a mixture of golfers. And oftentimes, your perfect golfer looks like you. And if it does, then you know, high five yourself because that does make it a lot easier because you can speak exactly like your golfer. Golf courses who get extremely specific about who they are targeting, targeting are going to be profitable. All right. So I have a little activity. I'm just going to give you a link to it so we can stay on schedule. But um, my activity is I'm going to have you answer some questions and we're going to look through what is your perfect golfer. Now, we were going to work on it together, but we're not going to. But, um, so anyway, my follow-up is after you figure out who your perfect golfer is, 
you also need to look at the other aspects of your business and find out who your perfect person is for that. Golf is kind of a difficult business to be in, in fact, because we have five businesses often in one. And so my perfect lesson participant may not actually look like my perfect golfer. And so we need to make sure we also are dialing in all of those areas of our golf course so when we're talking to that specific person, we know what they look like. We need to know who is our perfect wedding couple. I don't know how many times this has saved me from a bridezilla. I have what my perfect wedding couple is, and when I meet with, and so I mess my presentation, that's my presentation in words and emails and stuff like that, and if they don't like me through my words of how I'm presenting myself, I'm probably not going to like working with them. And um, I mean, this last year we had uh, 36 weddings. I have loved every single one of my brides. And I completely attribute it to the fact that I dialed in who is my perfect wedding couple. Also, who's your perfect wedding or out, uh, your golf coordinator? And on and on and on. Just take and dissect your business and pick out who is that perfect person. And then when you go through and you're going to comb through your website, when you go through and you're going to comb through your, your social media, you're going to keep that person in your mind. And this is the best part, because uh, this is a question I get asked frequently. There's so many pieces of social media out there. Which one do you pick? And this is really easy to figure out. You pick the platform where your perfect golfer hangs out, and then you don't have to worry about all the rest. Isn't that sometimes easier than trying to be great at you know, 10 different social media platforms? All right. Um, let's see, I kind of went through all that. So I wanna, this is a little example of what we're doing. So I actually named my golfer. Um, it's real great, right, Joe Golfer. Um, but he's about 36. Um, he has kids, he has an income. I talked about what, um, what TV shows he likes to watch and all of those kinds of things. And then what I did was I shared it with my staff. And this is also extremely important. We have a, a board in the back of where I shared this with my staff. And I have one staff member, um, I think maybe you just never read this, um, because he's always trying to make me be something that I'm not. I'm just an everyday golf course. And he's always trying to like, well, you need to have this fancy thing here, and you need to put this sign up here, and we need to do this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, well, I, I know that that's what it was like at the country club that you went and played at last week, but that just really isn't my golf course. And that's totally okay. I, I'm never going to be Des Moines Golf and Country Club, and that's completely fine. We appeal to two totally different people. And that's a really good segue. Trust me on this. So this last year, in case you weren't paying attention, Des Moines, which is where I'm from, um, was host to the Solheim Cup. And the Solheim Cup was played at Des Moines Golf and Country Club. Absolutely a beautiful golf course. Um, I have played it several times. And uh, for my personal, uh, I would rather play my golf course just because I just don't, that's just not me. And that's totally fine. But I had this gal, and she decided to she wanted to book uh, an outing. She was bringing in a busload of about 50 golfers, and she just liked my title of Wizard of Fun. And she came and brought her golf outing to our um, golf course, and she played two days before the Solheim Cup. And then the next day, they were going to Glen Oaks, which is another very high-end um, country club. So we're talking like <laughs> two different uh, levels of golf here. And we knew within the first five minutes that this was not our golfer. And it was just such an awkward day because I had, for, we have probably close to 70 golf outings a year. So we were, we're pretty popular, pretty hot in place. But, and I always have music playing, right? Uh, when golfers ride, because, you know, I, we're going to have fun. And I put in, uh, you know, music from Caddyshack and all sorts of, you know, fun stuff, right? And these people are like, can you, can you turn the music down? Can you find a, a different playlist? You know, I, I've never had that request before, but this is just an example. 
And then this was the other thing that just, and I'm sure this is not, may not even be funny to some of you, but the other thing was that we have been in business for 45 years. This is the first time we've ever had this request. So they're out playing golf, right? And um, they have the closest to the pin contest. And we're using the same stakes that we've used for, I don't know, 40 years. And they called in and they said, how do we measure the closest to the pin? Because there's not a tape measure attached. And we were like, uh, we're kind of more of a walk it off kind of golf course. <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong. I mean, they were great people. They were, they were super nice. They were Gungo USA. They had a good time. But my point is that they, they didn't belong at my golf course. They were a totally different type of golfer. And I'm sure I didn't ask them, but they probably had a more enjoyable day when they went and played at Glen Oaks. Now, as I was uh, um, putting this all together, I found this awesome quote by, um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this gentleman named um, Leo Burnett. Uh, but he um, was a founder of this huge marketing firm in Chicago. And he says, if you can't turn yourself into your customer, then you probably shouldn't be in the ad writing business. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that even this is also accurate, that if you can't turn yourself into your customer, then you probably shouldn't be in business. All right, so you're just going to have to write this down so that we can uh, go ahead and break out. Um, this is an activity, it's on Google Drive, and that's how you get to the, like, I just linked my Google Drive to that um, uh, link right there. So it's on um, theallisongeorge.com forward slash YPG, as in your perfect golfer. <laughs> um, and that, just as, I, I'm, I've got a bunch of questions for you just to kind of think through and then go ahead and fill that out so that you can really dial that in. And then, as I mentioned earlier, uh, once you get your perfect golfer lined up, then you're also going to want <coughs> to dial in all of those other people of your business. Um, I have um, recorded, and I'm going to go through and answer, and since we've never done TechCon before, I have, I have no idea how much uh, you guys know and what you don't know, so I'm going to be doing follow-up questions that you guys can um, opt into that, and I will be sending out recordings later of uh, any questions that you have concerning my presentations. Okay, so I think that, and how did I do? Did I get us back on track? All right, we're only five minutes late now. Okay, so without further ado, if you are staying here, um, my next presentation is uh, choosing the best social media for your golfer. Um, you can go ahead and hang out here, you're totally fine. The next, um, if you want to, there's also, and I don't have the title for it, I'm sorry, the website is over in Starvine 12. Does anybody have what the name of it is? I, I don't think I'm old enough for reading glasses yet, but I'm getting pretty close. <laughs> Website basics, are you wasting money? All right, there you go. Website basics, are you wasting money? Okay, that's over in Starvine 12. And we'll give them just a little bit of time.